Space launch market competition is the manifestation of market forces in the launch service provider business. In particular it is the trend of competitive dynamics among payload transport capabilities at diverse prices having a greater influence on launch purchasing than the traditional political considerations of country of manufacture or the national entity using, regulating or licensing the launch service. Following the advent of spaceflight technology by humans in the late 1950s, space launch services came into being, exclusively by national programs. Later in the 20th century commercial operators became significant customers of launch providers. International competition for the communications satellite payload subset of the launch market was increasingly influenced by commercial considerations. However, even during this period, for both commercial and government entity launched comsats, the launch service providers for these payloads used launch vehicles built to government specifications, and with state-provided development funding exclusively. In the early 2010s, privately developed launch vehicle systems and space launch service offerings emerged. Companies now faced economic incentives rather than the principally political incentives of the earlier decades. The space launch business experienced a dramatic lowering of per-unit prices along with the addition of entirely new capabilities, bringing about a new phase of competition in the space launch market. History In the early decades of the space age—1950s to 2000s, the government space agencies of the Soviet Union and the United States pioneered space technology. This was augmented by collaboration with affiliated design bureaus in the USSR and contracts with commercial companies in the US. All rocket designs were built explicitly for government purposes. The European Space Agency ESA was formed in 1975, largely following the same model of space technology development. Other national space agencies, such as China's CNSA and India's ISRO also financed the indigenous development of their own national designs. Communications satellites were the principal non government market. Although launch competition in the early years after 2010 occurred only in and amongst global commercial launch providers, the U.S. market for military launches began to experience multi provider competition in 2015, as the U.S. government began to move away from their previous monopoly arrangement with United Launch Alliance for military launches. By 2018, the ULA monopoly on U.S. national security space launch had evaporated. By mid 2017, the results of this multi year competitive pressure on commercially bid launch prices was being observed in the actual number of launches achieved. With frequent recovery of first stage boosters by SpaceX, expendable missions had become a rare occurrence for them. Topic. 1970s and 1980s, commercial satellites emerge Non-military commercial satellites began to be launched in volume in the 1970s and 1980s. Launch services were supplied exclusively with launch vehicles developed originally for various Cold War military programs, with their attendant cost structures. Space News journalist Peter B. de Selding has asserted that French government leadership, and the Ariane Space Consortium, all but invented the commercial launch business in the 1980s, principally by ignoring U.S. government assurances that the reusable U.S. space shuttle would make expendable launch vehicles like Ariane obsolete. Little market competition emerged inside any national market before approximately the late 2000s. Some global commercial competition arose between the national providers of various nation states for international commercial satellite launches. Within the U.S., as late as 2006, the high-cost structures built into government contractors—Boeing's Delta IV and Lockheed Martin's Atlas V—launch vehicles left little commercial opportunity for U.S. launch service providers but considerable opportunity for low-cost Russian boosters based on leftover Cold War military missile technology. DARPA's Simon P. Worden and the USAF's Jess Sponable analyzed the situation in 2006 and offered that one bright point is the emerging private sector, which was then pursuing suborbital or small lift capabilities. They concluded, 
Although such vehicles support very limited U.S. Department of Defense or National Aeronautics and Space Administration spaceflight needs, they do offer potential technology demonstration stepping stones to more capable systems needed in the future." Demonstrating capabilities that would grow in the next five years while supporting published list prices substantially below the rates on offer by the national providers. Topic 2010s competition and pricing pressure. Since the early 2010s, new private options for obtaining spaceflight services emerged, bringing substantial price pressure into the existing market. Before 2013, Europe's Ariane Space, which flies the Ariane 5, and International Launch Services (ILS), which marketed Russia's Proton vehicle, dominated the communications satellite launch market. In November 2013, Ariane Space announced new pricing flexibility for the lighter satellites it carries to orbits aboard its Ariane 5 in response to SpaceX's growing presence in the worldwide launch market. In early December 2013, SpaceX flew its first launch to a geosynchronous orbit, providing additional credibility to its low prices, which had been published since at least 2009. The low launch prices offered by the company, especially for communication satellites flying to geostationary GTO orbit, resulted in market pressure on its competitors to lower their prices. By late 2013, with a published price of $56.5 million per launch to low Earth orbit, Falcon 9 rockets were already the cheapest in the industry. Reusable Falcon 9s could drop the price by an order of magnitude, sparking more space-based enterprise, which in turn would drop the cost of access to space still further through economies of scale. Falcon 9 GTO missions 2014 pricing was approximately $15 million less than a launch on a Chinese Long March 3B. Despite SpaceX prices being somewhat lower than Long March prices, the Chinese government and the Great Wall Industry Company which markets the long march for ComSat missions, made a policy decision to maintain ComSat launch prices at approximately $70 million. In early 2014 the ESA asked European governments for additional subsidies to face the competition from SpaceX, continuing to face stiff competition on price. In April seven European satellite operator companies, including the four largest in the world by annual revenue, asked that the ESA find immediate ways to reduce Ariane 5 rocket launch costs and, in the longer term, make the next generation Ariane 6 vehicle more attractive for smaller telecommunications satellites. C. Considerable efforts to restore competitiveness in price of the existing European launcher need to be undertaken if Europe is to maintain its market situation. In the short term, a more favorable pricing policy for the small satellites currently being targeted by SpaceX seems indispensable to keeping the Ariane launch manifest strong and well populated. In competitive bids during 2013 and early 2014, SpaceX was winning many launch customers that formerly would have been all but certain clients of Europe's Ariane Space Launch Consortium, with prices that are $60 million or less. Facing direct market competition from SpaceX, the large U.S. launch provider United Launch Alliance announced strategic changes in 2014 to restructure its launch business—replacing two launch vehicle families Atlas V and Delta IV with the new Vulcan architecture—while implementing an iterative and incremental development program to build a partially reusable and much lower-cost launch system over the next decade. In June 2014, Ariane Space CEO Stefan Israel announced that European efforts to remain competitive in response to SpaceX's recent success had begun in earnest. This included the creation of a new joint venture company from Ariane Space's two largest shareholders, the launch vehicle producer Airbus and engine producer Safran. No additional details of the efforts to become more competitive were released at the time. In August 2014, Eutelsat, the third largest fixed satellite services operator worldwide by revenue, indicated that it planned to spend approximately €100 million Euros less each year in the next three years, due to lower prices for launch services and by transitioning their comsats to electric propulsion. 
They indicated they are using the lower prices they can get from SpaceX against Arianespace in negotiations for launch contracts. By December 2014, Arianespace had selected a design and commenced development of the Ariane 6, its new entrant into the commercial launch market aiming for more competitively priced launch service offerings, with operational flights planned to begin in 2020. In October 2014, ULA announced a major restructuring of processes and workforce to decrease launch costs by half. One of the reasons given for the restructuring and new cost reduction goals was competition from SpaceX. ULA had less success landing contracts to launch private, commercial communications and Earth observation satellites than it had with launch U.S. military payloads, but CEO Tori Bruno believed the new lower cost launcher could be competitive and succeed in the commercial satellite sector. The U.S. GAO calculated the average cost of each ULA rocket launch for the U.S. government had risen to approximately $420 million in 2014. By November 2014, SpaceX had already begun to take market share from Arianespace. Eutelsat CEO Michel de Rosen said, in reference to ESA's program to develop the Ariane 6, each year that passes will see SpaceX advance, gain market share and further reduce its costs through economies of scale. European government research ministers approved the development of the new European rocket, Ariane 6, in December 2014, projecting the rocket would be cheaper to construct and to operate, and that more modern methods of production and a streamlined assembly to try to reduce unit costs. Plus, the rocket's modular design can be tailored to a wide range of satellite and mission types so it should gain further economies from frequent use. In 2015, the ESA was endeavoring to reorganize to reduce bureaucracy and decrease inefficiencies in launcher and satellite spending which had been tied historically to the amount of tax funds that each country has provided to it. In May 2015, ULA stated it would go out of business unless it won commercial and civil satellite launch orders to offset an expected slump in U.S. military and spy launches. As of 2015, SpaceX had remained the low-cost supplier in the industry. However, in the market for launches of U.S. military payloads, ULA faced no competition for nearly a decade, since the formation of the ULA joint venture from Lockheed Martin and Boeing in 2006. However, SpaceX was also upsetting the traditional military space launch arrangement in the U.S., which was called a monopoly by space analyst Marco Caceres and criticized by some in the U.S. Congress. As of May 2015, the SpaceX Falcon 9 V1.1 was certified by the USAF to compete to launch many of the expensive satellites which are considered essential to U.S. national security. University of Southampton researcher Clemens Rumpf argued in 2015 that the global launch industry was developed in an old world where space funding was provided by governments, resulting in a stable foundation for global space activities. The money for the space industry had been secure and did not encourage risk taking in the development of new space technologies. The space landscape had not changed much since the mid 1980s. As a result, the emergence of SpaceX was a surprise to other launch providers because the need to evolve launcher technology by a giant leap was not apparent to them. SpaceX show ed that technology has advanced sufficiently in the last 30 years to enable new, game-changing approaches to space access. Quote, the Washington Post said that the changes occasioned from multiple competing service providers resulted in a revolution in innovation. By mid-2015, Arianespace was speaking publicly about job reductions as part of an attempt to remain competitive in the European industry which is being restructured, consolidated, rationalized and streamlined to respond to SpaceX price competition. Still, Ariane Space remained confident it could maintain its 50% share of the space launch market despite SpaceX's slashing prices by building reliable rockets that are smaller and cheaper. Following the first successful landing and recovery of a SpaceX Falcon 9 first stage in December 2015, equity analysts at investment bank Jefferies estimated that launch costs to satellite operators using Falcon 9 launch vehicles may decline by about 40% of SpaceX typical $61 million per launch. Although SpaceX had only forecast an approximately 30% launch price reduction from the use of a reused first stage by early 2016. 
In early 2016, Arianespace was projecting a launch price of €90 Euros minus 100 million, about one half of the 2015 Ariane 5 per launch price. In March 2017, SpaceX reused an orbital booster stage that had been previously launched, landed, and recovered, stating the cost to the company of doing so was substantially less than half the cost of a new first stage. COO Gwyn Shotwell said the cost savings came even though SpaceX did extensive work to examine and refurbish the stage. We did way more on this one than is planned for future recovered stages. A 2017 industry-wide view by Spacenews reported, by 5 July 2017, SpaceX had launched 10 payloads during a bit over six months. Outperform -ing its cadence from earlier years. And is well on track to hit the target it set last year of 18 launches in a single year." There were indeed 18 successful Falcon 9 launches in 2017. By comparison, France-based Arianespace, SpaceX's chief competitor for commercial telecommunications satellite launches, is launching 11 to 12 times a year using its fleet of three rockets—the heavy-lift Ariane 5, medium-lift Soyuz and light-lift Vega. Russia has the ability to launch a dozen or more times with Proton doing both government and commercial missions, but has operated at a slower cadence the past few years due to launch failures and the discovery of an incorrect material used in some rocket engines. United Launch Alliance, SpaceX's chief competitor for defense missions, regularly conducts around a dozen or more launches per year, but the Boeing Lockheed Martin joint venture has only performed four missions through mid year 2017. By 2018, the monopoly ULA had held on U.S. national security space launch was over. ULA responded to the Falcon 9 by beginning development in 2014 on the Vulcan rocket, a partly reusable vehicle powered by Blue Origin B-4 engines, intended to replace its aging expendable Atlas V and Delta IV rockets. In early 2018, Spacenews reported that T he rise of SpaceX has disrupted the launch industry at large. By mid-2018, with Proton flying as few as two launches in an entire year, the Russian state corporation Roscosmos announced they would retire the Proton launch vehicle, in part due to competition from lower-cost launch alternatives. In 2018, SpaceX launched a record 21 times in 2018, exceeding the 18 launches in 2017. ULA had flown just eight flights in 2018, but as of 23 December 2018 did have one more that could launch in 2018. Topic. Raising private capital Private capital invested in the space launch industry before to 2015 was modest. From 2000 through the end of 2015, a total of $13.3 billion of investment finance had been invested in the space sector. $2.9 billion of that was venture capital financing, of which $1.8 billion was invested in 2015 alone. For the space launch sector, this began to change with the January 2015 Google and Fidelity Investments investment of $1 billion in SpaceX. While private satellite manufacturing companies had previously raised large capital rounds, that has been the largest investment to date in a launch service provider. SpaceX developed the Falcon Heavy first flight in February 2018, and are developing the BFR launch vehicle with private capital. No government financing is being provided for either rocket. After decades of reliance on government funding to develop the Atlas and Delta families of launch vehicles, in October 2014 the successor company, ULA, began development of a rocket, initially with private funds, as one part of a solution for its problem of skyrocketing launch costs. However, by March 2016 it had become clear that the new Vulcan launch vehicle would be developed with funding via a public-private partnership with the U.S. government. By early 2016, the U.S. Air Force had committed $201 million of funding for Vulcan development. ULA has not put a firm price tag on the total cost of Vulcan development but ULA CEO Tori Bruno has said new rockets typically cost $2 billion, including $1 billion for the main engine. ULA had asked the U.S. government in 2016 to provide a minimum of $1.2 billion by 2020 to assist it in developing the new U.S. launch vehicle. It was unclear how the change in development funding mechanisms might change ULA plans for pricing market-driven launch services. 
Since Vulcan development began in October 2014, the privately generated funding for Vulcan development has been approved only on a short-term basis. The ULA Board of Directors, composed entirely of executives from Boeing and Lockheed Martin, is approving development funding on a quarter-by-quarter -quarter basis. Other launch service providers are developing new space launch systems with substantial government capital investment. For the new ESA launch vehicle, Ariane 6, aiming for flight in the 2020s, 400 million euros of development capital was requested to be industry's share, ostensibly private capital. 2.815 billion euros was slated to be provided by various European government sources at the time the early finance structure was made public in April 2015. In the event, France's Airbus Safran launchers, the company building the Ariane 6, did agree to provide €400 million Euros of development funding in June 2015, with expectation of formalizing the development contract in July 2015. As of May 2015, the Japanese legislature was considering legislation to provide a legal framework for private company spaceflight initiatives in Japan. It was unclear whether the legislation would become law and, if so, whether significant private capital would subsequently enter the Japanese space launch industry as a result. In the event, the legislation appears not to have become law, and little change in the funding mechanism for Japanese space vehicles are anticipated. The economics of space launch are driven, in part, by business demand in the space economy. Morgan Stanley projected in 2017 that Revenue from the global industry will increase to at least $1.1 trillion by 2040, more than triple the figure in 2016. This does not include the more aspirational possibilities presented by space tourism or mining, nor by NASA megaprojects. Topic 2019 and beyond. A number of market responses to the increase of lower cost competition in the space launch market began in the 2010s. As rocket engine and rocket technologies have fairly long development cycles, most of the results of these moves will not be seen until the late 2010s and early 2020s. ULA entered into a partnership with Blue Origin in September 2014 to develop the B4 LOX methane engine to replace the Rode 180 on a new lower cost first stage booster rocket. At the time, the engine was already in its third year of development by Blue Origin. ULA indicated then they expected the new stage and engine to start flying no earlier than 2019 on a successor to the Atlas V. A month later, ULA announced a major restructuring of processes and workforce to decrease launch costs by half. One of the reasons given for the restructuring and new cost reduction goals was competition from SpaceX. ULA intended to have preliminary design ideas in place for a blending of the Atlas V and Delta IV technology by the end of 2014, but in the event, the high-level design was announced in April 2015. By early 2018, ULA had moved the first launch date for the Vulcan launch vehicle to no earlier than mid-2020. Blue Origin is also planning to begin flying its own orbital launch vehicle—the new Glenn. In 2020, a rocket that will also use the Blue B-4 engine on the first stage, the same as the ULA Vulcan. Blue Origin's Jeff Bezos initially said they did not plan to compete for the U.S. military launch market, stating the market is a relatively small number of flights. It's very hard to do well and ULA is already great at it. I'm not sure where we would add any value. Bezos sees competition as a good thing, particularly as competition leads to his ultimate goal of getting millions and millions of people living and working in space. This decision was reversed in 2017, with Blue Origin saying it did intend to compete for U.S. national security launches. In early 2015, the French space agency CNES began working with Germany and a few other governments to start a modest research effort with a hope to propose a LOX, methane reusable launch system, tentatively named Ariane Next, by mid-2015, with flight testing unlikely before approximately 2026. The stated design objective was to reduce both the cost and duration of reusable vehicle refurbishment and was partially motivated by the pressure of lower cost competitive options with newer technological capabilities not found in the Ariane 6. Responding to competitive pressures, one stated objective of Ariane Next is to reduce Ariane launch cost by a factor of two beyond improvements brought by Ariane 6. 
Operational flights are scheduled to begin in 2020. SpaceX stated in 2014 that if they were successful at developing the reusable technology, launch prices in the $5 to $7 million range for the reusable Falcon 9 could be achieved in the longer term. In the event, SpaceX did not choose to develop the reusable second stage for the Falcon 9, but are doing so for their next generation launch vehicle, the new fully reusable BFR. SpaceX indicated in 2017 that the single launch marginal cost of BFR would be approximately $7 million. After the mid-2010s, prices for Smallsat and CubeSat launch services began to decline significantly. Both the addition of new small launch vehicles to the market Rocket Lab Electron, Firefly, Vector, and several Chinese service providers and the addition of new capacity of rideshare services are putting price pressure on existing providers. CubeSats that used to cost $350,000 minus $400,000 to launch are now $250,000 and going down. According to an industry panel interviewed in October 2018, an industry shakeout is expected between 2019 and 2021 due to the excess supply compared to demand. Prices should reach stability once the new entrants have demonstrated their capabilities. Topic: <laughs> Competition for the American heavy lift market. As early as August 2014, media sources noted that the U.S. launch market may have two competitive super heavy launch vehicles available in the 2020s to launch payloads of 100 metric tons pounds or more to low Earth orbit. The U.S. government is developing the Space Launch System SLS, capable of lifting very large payloads of 70 to 130 tons to pounds from Earth. On the commercial side, SpaceX has been privately developing its next-generation BFR launch architecture formerly known as the Mars Colonial Transporter or the Interplanetary Transport System, featuring fully reusable boosters and spacecraft, and targeting 150 tons pounds of payload. Development of the Methalox Raptor engine began in 2012, and the first flight tests are scheduled for 2019. By 2014 NASASpaceflight.com reported. SpaceX had never openly portrayed its BFR plans in competition with NASA's SLS. However, should SpaceX make solid progress on the development of its BFR over the coming years, it is almost unavoidable that America's two HLVs will attract comparisons and a healthy debate, potentially at the political level. The BFR system is planned to replace the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launch vehicles, as well as the Dragon spacecraft, initially aiming at the Earth orbit launch market, but explicitly adding substantial capability to support long-duration spaceflight in the cislunar and Mars mission environments. SpaceX intends this approach to bring significant cost savings that will help the company justify the development expense of designing and building the BFR system. Following the successful first launch of the SpaceX Falcon Heavy in February 2018, and with SpaceX advertising a $90 million list price for transporting up to 63,800 kilograms (140,700 pounds) to low Earth orbit, U.S. President Donald Trump said. If the government did it, the same thing would have cost probably 40 or 50 times that amount of money. I mean literally. When I heard $80 million, I'm so used to hearing different numbers with NASA. Space journalist Eric Berger reported, Trump seems to be siding with commercial space advocates, who say that, while rockets like the Falcon Heavy may be slightly less capable than the SLS, they come at a drastically reduced price that will enable much quicker, broader exploration of the solar system. <laughs> <laughs> Launch contract competitive results Topic Before 2014. Before 2014, Ariane Space had dominated the commercial launch market for many years. In 2004, for example, they held over 50% of the world market. 2010 to 26 geostationary commercial satellites were ordered under long-term launch contracts. 2011, only 17 geostationary commercial satellites went under contract during 2011 as an 
historically large capital spending surge by the biggest satellite fleet operators began to tail off, something that had been anticipated to follow the various satellite fleets being substantially upgraded. 2012, as of September 2012, the major launch providers globally were Arianespace France, International Launch Services United States which markets the Russian Proton launch vehicle, and Sea Launch of Switzerland which markets the Russian-Ukrainian Zenit rocket. In late 2012, each of them had manifests that were full or nearly so for both 2012 and 2013. 23 geostationary orbit communications satellites were placed under firm contract during 2013. Topic 2014. A total of 20 launches were booked in 2014 for commercial launch service providers. 19 were for flights to geostationary orbit (GEO). One was for a low Earth orbit (LEO) launch. Ariane Space and SpaceX each signed nine contracts for geostationary launches, while Mitsubishi Heavy Industries was awarded one. United Launch Alliance signed one commercial contract to launch an Orbital Sciences Corporation Cygnus spacecraft to the LEO orbiting International Space Station following the destruction over the pad of an orbital Antares vehicle in October 2014. This was the first year in some time that no commercial launches were booked on the Russian Proton M and Russian Ukrainian Zenit launch service providers. For perspective, eight additional satellites in 2014 were booked by national launch providers in deals for which no competitive bids were sought. Overall, in 2014, Ariane Space took 60% of commercial launch market share. Topic. 2015 In 2015, Ariane Space signed 14 commercial order launch contracts for geosynchronous orbit comsats, while SpaceX received only 9, with International Launch Services Proton and United Launch Alliance signing one contract each. In addition, Ariane Space signed their largest launch contract ever for 21 LEO launches for OneWeb using the Europeanized Russian Soyuz launch vehicle launching from the ESA spaceport, and two Vega Smallsat launches, the launch of the U.S. Air Force's first GPS-3 satellite is expected no earlier than 2017 rather than 2016 as originally planned. ULA after having held a government-sanctioned monopoly on U.S. military launches for the previous decade, declined to even submit a bid, leaving the likely contract award winner to be SpaceX, the only other domestic U.S. provider of launch services to be certified as usable by the U.S. military. 2016. Topic. Since 2016 SpaceX's market share increased rapidly. In 2016, SpaceX had 30% global market share for newly awarded commercial launch contracts. In 2017, the market share reached 45%. The estimate for 2018 is about 65% as of July 2018. Topic launch industry response in addition to price reductions for proffered launch service contracts, launch service providers are restructuring to meet increased competitive pressures within the industry. ULA has begun a major restructuring of processes and workforce to decrease launch costs by half. In May 2015, ULA announced it would decrease its executive ranks by 30% in December 2015, with the layoff of 12 executives. The management layoffs are the beginning of a major reorganization and redesign as ULA endeavors to slash costs and hunt out new customers to ensure continued growth despite the rise of SpaceX. According to one Ariane Space Managing Director, it's quite clear there's a very significant challenge coming from SpaceX, he said. Therefore, things have to change, and the European industry is being restructured, consolidated, rationalized and streamlined. Jean Bodhi, chief technology officer for Airbus which makes the Ariane 5 warned that those who don't take Elon Musk seriously will have a lot to worry about. Airbus announced in 2015 that they would open a R&D center and venture capital fund in Silicon Valley. Airbus CEO Fabrice Bregier stated, What is the weakness of a big group like Airbus when we talk about innovation? We believe that we have better ideas than the rest of the world. We believe that we know because we control the technologies and platforms. The world has shown us in the car industry, the space industry and the high-tech industry that this is not true. 
and we need to be open to others' ideas and others' innovations, Airbus Group CEO Tom Enders said, the only way to do it for big companies is really to create spaces outside of the main business where we allow and where we incentivize experimentation. That is what we have started to do but there is no manual. It is a little bit of trial and error. We all feel challenged by what the Internet companies are doing, following a SpaceX launch vehicle failure in June 2015, due to the lower prices, increased flexibility for partial payload launches of the Ariane heavy lifter, and decreased cost of operations of the ESA Guiana Space Center spaceport, Ariane Space regained the competitive lead in commercial launch contracts signed in 2015. SpaceX's successful recovery of a first-stage rocket in December 2015 has not changed the Arianespace outlook. Arianespace CEO Israel stated that the challenges of reusability have not disappeared. The stress on stage or engine structures of high-speed passage through the atmosphere, the performance penalty of reserving fuel for the return flight instead of maximizing rocket lift capacity, the need for many annual launches to make the economics work, all remain issues. Despite ULA restructuring begun in 2014 to decrease launch costs by half, the cheapest ULA space launch in early 2018 remains the Atlas V401 at a price of approximately $109 million, more than $40 million more than a a SpaceX standard commercial launch, which the U.S. military began to utilize for some U.S. government missions flying in 2018. By early 2018, two European space agencies, CNES and DLR, are to begin developing a new reusable engine aimed to be manufactured at one-tenth the cost of the Ariane 5's first stage engine, Prometheus. Its first flight test in a demonstration vehicle is expected in 2020. The goal is to establish a base of knowledge for future launch vehicles that could, maybe, be reusable, in the market for launches of small satellites, including both rideshare launch services on medium lift and heavy lift launch vehicles, and the developing capacity from small launch vehicles. Prices were falling by early 2018 as more launch capacity entered the market. CubeSat launches that had previously cost $350 minus $400,000 had declined by March 2018 to $250,000, and prices were continuing to decline. New capacity from Chinese Long March and Indian PSLV medium lift vehicles and a number of new small launchers from Virgin Orbit, Rocket Lab, Firefly, and a number of new Chinese small launch vehicles are expected to put more downward pressure on prices, while also increasing the ability of smallsets to purchase custom launch dates and launch orbits and increasing overall responsiveness to launch purchasers. As recently as 2013, nearly half of the world's commercial launch payloads were launched on Russian launch vehicles. By 2018 the Russian launch service market share is projected to shrink to about 10% of the world's commercial launch market. Russia only launched three commercial payloads in 2017. Technical problems with the Proton rocket and intense competition with SpaceX has been the prime drivers of this decline. SpaceX's share of the commercial market has grown from 0% in 2009 to a projected 50% for 2018. By 2018, Russia has indicated it may reduce focus on the commercial launch market. On 17 April 2018 Russia's chief spaceflight official, Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Rogozin said in an interview, "...the share of launch vehicles is as small as 4% of the overall market of space services. The 4% stake isn't worth the effort to try to elbow Musk and China aside. Payloads manufacturing is where good money can be made." The global launch market revenue from the 33 commercial orbital launches in 2017 is estimated to be only just over $3 billion. The global space economy, however is much larger at $345 billion in 2016. The launch industry is becoming increasingly competitive, however, to date there has been no indication of a large increase of launch opportunities in response to decreasing prices. Russia may be the first launch provider to be a casualty of oversupply of launch services. By May 2018, as SpaceX prepared to launch the first Block 5 version of Falcon 9, Eric Berger reported in AR's Technica that, during the eight years since its maiden launch, Falcon 9 had become the dominant rocket globally, through SpaceX efforts to take risks and relentlessly innovate driving efficiency upwards. The first Block 5 booster flew successfully on the 11th of May 2018, and SpaceX then lowered the standard price of a Falcon 9 launch from $62 million to about $50 million. This move further strengthens SpaceX's competitiveness in the commercial launch market.
In mid-2018, no fewer than three commercial launch vehicles—Ariane 6, Vulcan, and New Glenn, were being targeted for initial launch in 2020, two of them explicitly aimed at competitively responding to the offerings of SpaceX although journalists and industry experts were expressing doubts that these all these target dates would be met. In addition to building new launch vehicles and endeavoring to lower launch prices, competitive responses may include new product offerings, and now do include a more schedule-oriented launch cadence for dual-manifested payloads on offer from Blue Origin. Blue announced in 2018 they intend to contract for launch services a bit differently than the contract options that have been traditionally offered in the commercial launch market. The company has stated they will support a regular launch cadence of up to eight launches per year. If one of the payload providers for a multi-payload launch is not ready on time, Blue will hold to the launch timeframe, and fly the remaining payloads on time at no increase in price. This is quite different from how dual launch manifested contracts have been previously handled by Ariane Space, Ariane V and Ariane 6 and Mitsubishi Heavy Industries HIIA and H3. SpaceX and International Launch Services offer only dedicated launch contracts. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Effect on related industries. Satellite design and manufacturing is beginning to take advantage of these lower cost options for space launch services. One such satellite system is the Boeing 702 SP which can be launched as a pair on a lighter weight dual commsat stack, two satellites conjoined on a single launch, and which was specifically designed to take advantage of the lower cost SpaceX Falcon 9 launch vehicle. The design was announced in 2012 and the first two commsats of this design were lofted in a paired launch in March 2015, for a record low launch price of approximately $30 million per GSO commsat. Boeing CEO James McNerney has indicated that SpaceX's growing presence in the space industry is forcing Boeing to be more competitive in some segments of the market. Early information on a new constellation of 4,000 satellites intended to provide global Internet services, along with a new factory dedicated to manufacturing low-cost smallsat satellites, indicate that the satellite manufacturing industry may experience a supply shock similar to what the launcher industry is experiencing. In the 2010s, venture capital investor Steve Jurvetson has indicated that it is not merely the lower launch prices, but the fact that the known prices act as a signal in conveying information to other entrepreneurs who then use that information to bring on new related ventures. See also Commercialization of space Billionaire space race New space Space industry <laughs>